Hey guys, back again here once again. We're going to talk about the only rock. Jesus Christ is the only rock for the believer, not Peter. So let, let's get this uh, straightened out for some of you guys out there that perhaps you've been told that Peter's the rock and uh, uh, the church is built on Peter. I'll give you some encouragement here today that the church is indeed built upon Jesus Christ and him alone. So one of the main boasts of the um, Roman Catholic system is that they are the one and only true church on earth. You know, after I came to know the Lord in 1989, I realized that the Roman Catholic Church was not even part of the true church of Jesus Christ. They went through all of the traditions and rituals of the Roman Catholic system, but I did not know the Lord Jesus Christ until 1989. So they teach, ladies and gentlemen, that a person is born again when they are baptized as an infant, but I know that's not true. Because I was born again the biblical way, folks, and it's through hearing the word of God preached. And um, in fact, that's what Peter uh, taught himself. L listen to what Pete said here. First Peter one twenty two to twenty five. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you first Peter one twenty two to twenty five. Keep in mind that was the apostle Peter who wrote those words, and he's telling you right there, very clear, ladies and gentlemen, that a person is born again by the word of God, by the seed of the word of God. When you preach the word of God, ladies and gentlemen, you're sowing seed, spiritual seed, and that seed takes root inside the heart, and that's how uh, everlasting life will spring up inside the believer who puts their faith in Jesus Christ. So uh, that's one of the scriptures that they like to use. Now, here's another one, a very common uh, passage that's used by Rome. Uh, let's look at Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 18. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias or Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 uh, to 18. Now, the Greek word there for Peter is the word petros, and that is a piece of rock, whereas the Greek word for the word rock is the word petra which describes a mass of rock. So keep that in mind as the Lord questioned his disciples as to what the people were saying about him, meaning Jesus. Jesus wanted to know who they thought he was. They told him that some thought he was John the Baptist, uh, which he was not. Some thought that he was the prophet Elijah, which he was not. Some thought that he was the prophet Jeremiah or some other prophet, which he was not. Jesus then asked them, who they thought he was, and Peter, Simon, responded and told him that he was the Christ or Messiah, the Son of the living God, which he was. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ then told Peter that flesh and blood, meaning another human being, did not reveal that information to him, but his Father, which is in heaven. So Jesus was letting Peter and his fellow disciples know that the church of God would be built upon the testimony which Peter spoke and the revelation which comes 
from above. That came from the Father. The outside people did not have the revelation which Peter and his fellow disciples had, and thus they believed Jesus to be John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So the true believer, ladies and gentlemen, in Jesus Christ, who's been genuinely born again of the Spirit, knows that Jesus was indeed the Christ or the Messiah and the Son of the living God. That truth cannot be understood by the natural man, but only by the Spirit of the living God. Hear me now. Folks, if you've been truly born again of the Spirit, then this information, ladies and gentlemen, that you know that Jesus Christ is in fact who he said he was, that he came down from uh, above, that he's, that he's deity. Folks, this is not something that the natural mind can understand. You may have a lot of information or knowledge stored up within your uh, your brain, <laughs> But you, you know something, folks, you, you, that doesn't mean you're born again. You, you see, th th this revelation of who Jesus Christ is. Now, keep in mind, I'm speaking as a former uh, Roman Catholic. You know, I had a lot of information, a lot of knowledge, brain uh, knowledge. But, folks, I was not saved. I was on my way to hell. And uh, when I was truly born again, then I understood. And when, when you folks hear me now, when, when you understand who Jesus Christ is, you are not going to be putting your faith in Peter, trust me, or any other disciple of his or any man or any pope or any priest. Uh, you're going to know Christ, folks, for real, and you will know he is who he said he was. That's how it was for me. Folks, when the Lord turns the lights on, it's like coming out of a dark room into a room filled with blazing light. Listen to this, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 to 14. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Listen to that. True Christian, ladies and gentlemen, you have not the Spirit of the world, but you have the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. It's the difference between being saved and lost, ladies and gentlemen. Either you have the Holy Ghost or you don't. You know, either a, either a woman is pregnant or or she's not. You know, it's that real. Either you have the Holy Ghost or you don't. You must be born again. So the Roman Catholic Church will have you uh, to believe that Peter is the rock of the church, but the scriptures are very clear that the Lord is the only rock of our salvation. There cannot be two different rocks. If you believe Peter to be the rock of your salvation and you're trusting in the Roman Catholic system, you have nothing more than an earthly rock versus the eternal rock, which is Jesus Christ himself. The revelation which the true believer in Jesus Christ has is that the Lord, our rock, became flesh and dwelt among us. He died for our sins, and then he rose from the dead. So Peter would be the first to tell you that he is not a rock, and he'd be the first to point you to the true and only rock, which is Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus Christ was the very same rock which led the true children of Israel in Old Covenant or Old Testament times. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. Oh, miss that, folks. And, and pay attention to the word spiritual, okay? We're talking about spiritual food, spiritual meat, spiritual drink. And it says the spiritual rock that followed the children of Israel was Christ. I'll never forget that. If you have this mental image of Jesus in a, in a little baby manger, the goo goo baby that's put in, in a little manger at Christmas time, folks, that's, that's tradition. It's a lie. <laughs> We're talking about Almighty God here. <laughs> We're talking about Almighty God. He is the rock. 
He came from above, and he's not in a, uh, a little bassinet or a crib, ladies and gentlemen. He is God Almighty. So Jesus is the Christ. He's the Messiah, and this is something the Jewish people need to know. If they reject Christ, they're rejecting their only hope. Let's get real here. I'll say it again. If Israel rejects Jesus Christ, they are rejecting their only hope. Same goes for the Gentiles. That's the truth. So this was the spiritual rock which led the fathers of Israel all of those years until a person comes into contact with the real spiritual rock, which is Jesus Christ. They remain dead in their sins and they're void of the everlasting life which God offers to all mankind. Jesus, not Peter, is the very cornerstone of the true spiritual house of God and entrance into that house is through a spiritual new birth, better known as being born again of the Spirit. That's why I speak out against the false teachings of Rome the way I do because many are being led astray and ultimately damned for eternity because they are not truly saved. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I would have ended up in hell if I had not come to a knowledge of the truth through God's word. So here's some scriptures, ladies and gentlemen, uh, proving that only God is the rock. The Lord liveth and blessed be my rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Hallelujah. Psalm one, uh, that's Psalm 18, verse 46. Here's another one, Psalm 31, 3. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Psalm 62, 2. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense and I shall not be greatly moved. Psalm 62, 6. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Don't forget that, folks. Look at the word only. He only. Peter is not uh, another rock. <laughs> Okay, there's one rock, it's God. You don't you don't want your you don't want to be leaning on a rock that's another man. He said Peter was just a man, but but God is God. Don't ever forget that. So after I came to know the one and only rock of my salvation, the rosary beads and the prayers to Mary stopped immediately. The religious medals, beads, trinkets were discarded, tossed in the garbage can, folks. I knew that I did not need Mary or any other created human being to intercede for me because I met the real Jesus Christ for myself. I was born again the real way, and I now love the Word of God because it is the truth which set me free. Jesus Christ prayed to the Father in the following way. Listen to this. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into of the world and for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That's why people, that's why Christians uh, preach the gospel, folks, because people can become believers through the word that the, that, that Christian preaches. So true revival, ladies and gentlemen, is going to come when the pastors in the Protestant and uh, evangelical churches start speaking out against the false gospels of our modern day, and that would include the false gospel of Rome. The Lord will never bless a unity with a false gospel but he will in fact curse it. Listen to this, Galatians 1, 8 to 10. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Galatians 1, 8 to 10. So Pope Francis and company, they need to repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ because the blood of untold millions is upon their hands and upon the hands of all those who work hand in hand with them. Listen to this, for there's one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, 1 Timothy 2 and 5, John 14 and 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by 
me. Powerful words. I'll close with this powerful scripture. Acts 4, 10 to 12. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Hallelujah. Good, good word uh, that 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 we have here, folks. Acts four ten to twelve. All the other scriptures. Uh, do you, do you know the Lord today, folks? That's the question I have for you. Do you know the Lord? Who's your rock? Is Jesus Christ your rock? Where's Peter your rock? Have you ever been truly saved? Have you ever been truly born again of the Spirit? Or are you just religious? You know, I was religious but lost. Okay, so it's, you know, millions, billions probably, people are religious or they, they might describe themselves as being spiritual. Oh, I'm a very spiritual person. But, but are, you, are you saved? Are you born again? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Be blessed.